Chris, good seeing you again. Thank you so much for doing this. Can you tell us where things stand now with the Chitterelli campaign? Sure, Larry, thanks for having me, first of all. So right now we are counting provisional ballots or the state is counting provisional ballots county by county. Um, we are looking, as we had stated in Jack's uh, statement or the campaign statement earlier this week, that we're looking for that provisional ballot count to shrink this lead to a point where a recount is, uh, is both fair and, and makes sense. Um, so we, you know, we're hoping that the numbers continue to track the right way for us. We're certainly doing uh, better in the provisional ballot count than we did in the absentee ballot count by a good amount. The question is, will it be enough to, to ask for a recount that is, uh, you know, that makes sense. What is enough? What, what does the number have to shrink to for you to ask for a recount? We, we think around 1%. Um, if, if the margin between the candidates is around 1%, that seems to make sense to us, given that a lot of other states in the, in the country have an automatic recount at 1% uh, margin. New Jersey doesn't have that. So the onus is on the, the person losing. Uh, I don't expect Governor Murphy to ask for a recount if it gets to 1%, um, but uh, that's about where we want to be in and around that number. If it's a little bit over that you said in and around, so it could yeah, be. Yeah, it doesn't have to be exact to the decimal point in, in that neighborhood. Right, you have to make a decision. If it's one point two, you got to make a decision. If it's one point five, you have to make a decision. I, yep. I, I get it. Um, and and this is exactly why you didn't concede, right? This is this what the scenario you're going through right now is exactly why you didn't concede, especially since the provisional ballots seem to be at least leaning in your favor. That's right. And listen, I, you know, the way Jack looks at this is the same way Senator Sweeney, you know, a Democrat has looked at it from his standpoint, which is let these ballots be counted. New Jersey has a new system this year, uh, which has proven to be clunky, putting it politely, um, that we're still sitting here, you know, talking about ballots being counted. Um, this is a system Governor Murphy put into place. He signed into law. So, um, you know, we think, you know, there's probably changes that need to be made to that system, which we can talk about after the election's over. But right now, there's no harm in, in making sure all the votes are counted and that, um, you know, both, uh, both Jack and also all of Jack's supporters and the people of New Jersey can have confidence in the result. We've reached out to Jack Chitterelli a couple of times, and, and we understand why he doesn't want to speak right now, because the process is still being played out. How's he doing? Jack's doing great. Uh, listen, he, he put on a hell of a campaign. Um, I think he surprised a lot of people both here in New Jersey and nationally, but the people who weren't surprised were the ones inside the campaign, saw how, how hard he worked, how he was connecting with people. Um, certainly if it, if it ends up that we fall short, he like the rest of us will be disappointed. Um, no one was in this for second place, um, but he's doing well. Jack's a, an optimistic guy by nature and I don't think he's seen the last of him. Oh, that's interesting. Cause that's what I was gonna ask next. What is your gut on this? And believe me, this isn't firm, so you're not announcing for him, but what is your gut? Will he run again for governor? Uh, honestly, I mean, I wouldn't want to even speculate that far along, Larry, about what do you do, but I think he's, he listen, he was part of and probably the leading edge of the revival of the party here in the state. If you look what happened down ballot, Jack Cittarelli had a big, uh, a lot to do with the success of Republicans down ballot in legislative races and county races. He galvanized the party. Um, so I, I fully expect him to have a voice in the party moving forward. Whether that's a decision to run again, I, I really don't know. Well, if he did what he did last time, uh, he'll, he'll announce right away. <laughs> he has <laughs> actually right. well, been running continuously for, for over four years. So uh, I'm, I'm uh, sure I'll have to check with Melinda on that one first, Larry, to make sure that's okay. No, I get it. I get it. It takes a lot out of you. What's the lesson from this election? Because it wasn't just in New Jersey, it was across the country and especially in Virginia. How do you read this? What, what are you telling other people about this election? Well, listen, Donald Trump lost New Jersey by 16 points. Right now, Jack Chirilli is trailing by about two and a half. Um, it's a seismic shift back, uh, kind of a snap back to Republicans and to kind of common sense. And I think the lesson is that we saw and heard on the trail is that Governor Murphy uh, here in New Jersey just moved too far to the left too radical for the state in terms of his policies. And I think Joe Biden's uh, failures at the, at the national level certainly have, um, have jarred people. I, I think there was a, a uh, people who voted against President Trump and wanted something different went with Joe Biden, I think hoping for the best and they're getting the worst. And I think right now that, you know, people are looking to balance things out with, with Democrats controlling everything in Washington, 
certainly everything here in New Jersey and also at the time down in Virginia, I think people were looking for a check and balance. And I think a message uh, was sent certainly in Virginia. And I think one was sent here too. I mean, if you look at it, you know, we actually pulled back more votes from, from Trump to Chitterelli than I think they did from Trump to, to Yunkin. So, you know, New Jersey's a, a tough state, a million more Democrats. And right now we're losing by about 65,000 votes. So, you know, we got a, we made a long way. We just, we may not get all the way there, but we've, we've come a long way. Former Governor Christy Whitman wrote an editorial for NJ.com alleging that uh, Jack Chitterelli tried to have it both ways, that he cozied up to uh, Donald Trump more than Glenn Youngkin did, say, in Virginia. And I read your tweet on it. Um, you said it was lazy, uninformed, and self-serving. Do you want to add anything to that, or does that stand by itself? I think it stands by itself. I think I think it's all those things, and I, and I think, you know, she has a narrative that she's trying to to push, um, which she's entitled to do, but it's it's wrong. And frankly, if she if she paid attention to the election the way that I have, and the way that a lot of other people have, I know you have, uh, you know, following this race very closely, um, uh, she's off base, and I don't think anything more needs to be said about it. Governor Murphy says what you're doing right now by not conceding is dangerous and not what America is all about. What's your response to that? Uh, it's funny that it's dangerous for a Republican to wait for all the votes to be counted, but he did not have the same thing to say about Senate President Sweeney waiting for the votes to be counted. I guess it's only dangerous if a Republican wants the votes counted. Um, it's ridiculous. I, I, I think it's hyperbole. And frankly, I think it's dangerous for him to be suggesting that. I mean, we went through an election last year where there was concern by a lot of people about uh, voter integrity or ballot integrity. Um, Jack's been very clear about that. You know, Joe Biden's the president, he won the election. But we have a, an electorate that if we, in our system, if, if half the people or the losers of an election don't believe in the result, what kind of democracy do we have? So I think by him rushing or trying to rush along a result before the votes are even counted, um, I think he's the one who's potentially being a little bit more dangerous with the body politic here. Let things play out. I think Jack's whole idea was let's lower the temperature. Let's count the ballots. There's no rush here. Um, and let's get the right result and one that everyone can have confidence in. I want to look ahead a little bit, not the gubernatorial election, but I know you work with a, a lot of Republican candidates. You have the midterms coming up. Do you believe this, this wave that the Republicans have through these off-year elections will continue? And what are you telling your clients? Listen, I, I feel good about that. The one thing I think politics this year proves and every other, every other campaign cycle proves is that trying to predict politics or, or you know, get your crystal ball out is a, a dangerous thing. Talk about dangerous, that's dangerous, <laughs> trying to predict what's gonna happen next. But I, I do think that there's a, uh, a, a movement in the country that kind of wants to level things off and wants to bring things back. Um, so I do think Democrats, if you're a Democratic congressional candidate or a congressman or woman in a, in a difficult district or a swing district and you won by a little bit last time, I'd be really nervous if I were you. And I think it's, uh, I don't think Republicans can count on a wave to carry them. But right now, there's certainly momentum and wind at our back. Chris Russell, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks, Larry, for the time. I appreciate it.